why you need a specific place for study. Hello, I'm Malcolm Cox, and thank you for joining me today here at Quiet Time Coaching, and this is episode 45. And we're talking today about why it's important to have a specific place for our personal study. Where do you go to engage in the spiritual discipline of study? Now, I've been thinking about this recently because of a podcast I've been listening to. I listened to the Renovare podcast series. I'll put the, the link to that in, in the show notes. And I like the, uh, the, the very much. And there was a recent one entitled, uh, let's see, Spiritual Director and Author Phil Anderson and Lawyer Justin Campbell talk with Nathan Foster about how to study for transformation instead of just information. Transformation instead of just information. That's the important distinction, isn't it? When we do our study, our study of the Bible, or things about spiritual matters, what matters is transformation, not just information. How do we make that happen? And having this specific place for our study can be one of the things that helps us, amongst other things. Now, one of the interviewees spoke about the helpfulness to him of having a separate room in his house for his study. that He just goes to that room only to study. Nathan, the interviewer, uh, said his house wasn't big enough for that, but he did have a specific chair. Just a chair that all he does in that chair is study. Nothing else. His phone doesn't come with him to that, that chair. Nothing else does that will distract him. That's where he does his study. By the way, why do I have this music on in the background? I'll explain in just a minute. We'll get there in a second. Why do we need a place free from interruption? We need it because, and let me give you this thought, I believe we need this, a place free from interruption of any kind. We need it because intimacy and understanding are bred in a focused environment. Intimacy and understanding are bred in a focused environment, in a place where we're able to devote all of our heart, all of our mind into thinking about the topic that is before us, the study, the Bible verse, the passage, the chapter, or the spiritual discipline in front of us. What are we learning? What is God teaching us? It's so, we get so much deeper and we're focused in that way. It's well known that Jesus took himself off, didn't he, to be with God. In uh, Mark chapter 1 verse 35, he went off to a solitary place where he prayed. In Luke chapter 5, he often withdrew to lonely places and prayed. He took himself away. Uh, he didn't have a, Jesus didn't have a, a house with a study room. He didn't even have a chair uh, in which to study specifically. But he did go and find, intentionally, went off to find those places where he knew he would not be interrupted and he could be focused in his time there with God. Whether it was all prayer or a mixture of prayer and reflection on the scriptures and studying and thinking about what God was doing in his life and around him, nonetheless, he needed that time away free from distraction. And surely we do too, if we're going to really learn all the things that God has in mind for us. Now, to be honest, uh, this podcast and this thought came at a timely moment for me because I've let this slip a bit in my life. I, I do like to be focused and not distracted, but it, it's not been where it needs to be recently. So it's very helpful to think about this. So I've come up with some new resolutions for myself that I'll share with you, partly to get your feedback partly to get your ideas, and partly to hold myself accountable. So this is what I'm going to do for the next month to help me with my uh, study of God's Word in particular. So number one, I'm going to put my phone out of sight. My phone is going to be not visible. I'm going to put it in my pocket. I'm going to put it on the shelf behind me. I'm going to stick it in a drawer, but I'm going to make sure that it is out of sight. I've already disabled almost all notifications on my phone, but sometimes even having it in sight is enough of a distraction, a temptation to pick it up and check something. So I'm going to put it somewhere where I can't see it. Now I do my study here at my desk where I'm recording this, and I have my computer here, I have my accordance software in my laptop. So I need that, but I don't have to have my phone. And so my phone is going to go out of sight. That's the first thing. The second thing, I'm going to use my noise cancelling headphones. I've got some lovely noise cancelling headphones, these Sonys. I'll put a link to that on, in the show notes. I really like these. They're fantastic. They're, they're great sound, but also they're noise cancelling. So no other noises can distract me when I've got those on. And the music that you're hearing here is the music I always play when I do my Bible study. Uh, I played it 
I don't know how often now, but it's that music and it takes me there. I'm so used to it. If you're interested, it's the Mozart Piano Concerto in D minor, Kirkle 466. And I love it. It's three, it's got three beautiful movements and it is in total length. Let me just find out how long it is. Uh, it is in total, what, 24, it's about half an hour long. So it's just about right for the kind of Bible study I do per day. Sometimes I do more, sometimes I do a bit less, but I like that, let the whole piece of music play out. So, but even with the music playing, I can be distracted by sounds around me. So if I have these on, then I shall be in good shape to have less distractions. So I'm going to use those uh, as well. And the third thing I'm going to do is clear my desk. Clear the desk of everything not directly connected to my study. And so uh, I don't have much on my desk. I think better without the clutter around, but I do often have my full focus planner on the desk with some pens. I do often have my gratitude journal, uh, which I've been writing in as one of my spiritual disciplines actually for this year. Uh, I don't think I've shown you this yet, but I'll have to do another recording on that. But I have a, a nice journal I was given for uh, Christmas, I think it was, by my mother. And so I've been using that every day, writing in something I'm grateful for. But that's going to go. Everything that isn't involved in directly in the study is going to have to go. So those are my three practical resolutions to create a space which is only for study. Uh, uh, firstly, remove my phone from sight. Secondly, to use my noise cancelling headphones. And thirdly, to remove all things from the desk that aren't directly connected with study, including my gratitude journal and all other things. So that's what I'm going to try for the next month and see how that does for me. And I would like to know what you think. Of course, I'm not trying to create new rules like there's some kind of magic that will then create deeper study. It's not the keeping of the rules that will do that, and I might well change them. And of course, you don't have to sit at a desk to do good study. Uh, you, your, your particular uh, study space might be uh, on a seat on a train or a tube uh, uh, in the mornings on your way to work or back. It could be the passenger seat in your car. You get to work and before you go in, you've got a bit of time, you go and sit in the passenger seat for a while and do your study there instead of being in the driving seat there. Or perhaps it's, it's a park bench that you can frequent often on the way to work or during a break from work or on your way home or perhaps nearby where you live or in the garden. I, it doesn't really matter where it is. But what does matter is that we find and make the most of the, a special place for study. So what do you need to put out of sight to help you with this? What do you need to turn off or turn on to help you? Uh, what else do you do to enjoy deeper study? I would love to know. Please leave a comment wherever you see this recording. Leave it in the box below so we can all learn from each other because we learn best when we learn in community. Pass the link to this on to one other person who might benefit. Please do that. You can like these videos. You can subscribe to make sure you get uh, notifications when the next one goes up. And please uh, pass it on, as I say, to anybody uh, who might find it at all useful. And if you'd like some coaching in spiritual disciplines, I'm available to help. You can just uh, click the Coach Me button or go to Coach Me, coach.me, and you'll find me there. And if I can help, I would love to uh, see you there. So I hope until the next time we meet that this is a wonderful week of quiet times, drawing you closer to God and especially that you find that special place for study that will deepen your walk with God. Until the next time, take care and God bless.